Hello, welcome back to X-Men Classics. And this is episode number seven. And in this episode, I'm reviewing two issues of Uncanny X-Men. And I'm reviewing issues 10 and 11. First up, it's X-Men number 10. Featuring the debut of a brand new superhero. Well, not technically a super new character. New heroic character, per se. And his name is Kazar. And, of course, you saw the first appearance of his... Of his, I would say his friend, obviously his his uh, animal companion, this uh, saber tooth tiger named Zabu, and it's also the debut of the Savage Land. Yes, the Savage Land, a place the X Men go back to frequently over the years. Yes, the Savage Land. The story is called the Coming of Kazar. Great team is still pretty much the same thing. Um. Now, interesting thing about this Kazar. This Kazar is a reimagining of a Golden Age character with the same name, but he's completely unrelated. Mm -hmm. I mean, his first parents pages in a, in a backup story pages of Captain America comics back in the 40s. Um, he has a splash page. I know some people like when I scratch my nose, but my, it, my nose sometimes really itches. Uh, the book opens up uh, with the action news and training. Like, you have Gene basically taking apart an actual rifle. And putting it back together. Of course, uh, all the X-Men trained except for Cyclops and Angel. Cyclops is basically doing his part as deputy leader of the team. And Angel is basically watching a news report about um, about seeing Kazar. Well, say it's, it, 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 he doesn't identify as needed. A mysterious Arctic man. And so... They think he's possibly a mutant, and they go to Xavier, and he says, Xavier confirms that he is not a mutant, but he does send the X-Men to go investigate him. He also says that Washington contact, also contacted him about the mysterious man. So he sends the X-Men out there, and, and before Cyclops leaves his office, he says, Cerebro says there is no... Uh, there's." The street protects no presence of any mutants in the area, so he's perfectly fine. So they fly down to Antarctica, figure out what's going on, and they cut through the ice, and they find a secret tunnel, and it leads to some bones, and then leads, and then and following those bones leads directly to the Savage Land. Uh, there's no like really full page of this. That, that's one thing that is kind of bad about this is you don't get like a full like splash page of what the Savage Land looked like from from basically when they first enter it. And uh, the first dinosaur they encounter, I mean, they encounter dinosaurs. And the first one they encounter is a pterodactyl. Though it's called pterodactyl, but it's pterodactyl. Um, yeah, and they wander around. And then Jean gets kidnapped by these group of savages. Which, uh, when they meet up with the guy, he refers later as the Swamp Men. Yeah. And... And <laughs> he, he meets up with the X and basically he says, I am Kazar. His first words is, I am Kazar. Now he does speak um, somewhat of a, a bit of broken English, though let, later on he, do, he does speak proper English. And he gets upset when Beast was uh, touching him, well, because he was examining his muscles. And he sticks that boo on him, and then um, all of a sudden the swamp men show up again. Well, he says, first is Magor, the killer of the Manape tribe. Last killer, last of the Manape tribe. This is him. <laughs> Magor. Yeah. <laughs> Strange name, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And he fights him, and then uh, later on the, 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 the actual swamp men shows up. And so Kazar teams up with them to, to save uh, Jean Grey, who have been captured. And all of a sudden, Angel gets captured by these same guys. And apparently they were going to sacrifice him to a T-Rex, of all things. So the Axemen get up to there, get to where their, uh, their, their little city is, and they free. And of course, Jean frees herself and Angel. And of course, they beat up the swamp, the, uh, the swamp men. And... Uh, and then uh, Kazar calls in a group of woolly mammoths and basically destroys this whole like city. 
and the Swamp Man are defeated, and they all just leave the Savage Land. Of course, Kaza tells them to return, even though he does, they do later return. Um, and the issue wins basically says, but many questions are really answered, and we suspect this may not be the last we see of Kazar and Zabu. For further, for the future holds many mysteries which we will, uh, uh, which which we will we shall unravel one by one in the months to come. Here's the thing though: after this issue, Kazar later appears in a few issues of Daredevil before eventually later on getting his own spotlight book, spotlight run in the pages of Astonishing Tales, and had and had a, a string of ongoing series over the years. His most recent appearance that he made what, what was in uh, his own self-titled five-issue miniseries, which was coming up at the same time as another miniseries, which is also taking place in Savage Land, called Scar, King of the Savage Land. But that was the last time I saw this character. But, of course, we later reveal that his real name is Kevin Plunder, but that's revealed, that's revealed later in the pages of Daredevil. Otherwise, though... That, that's it for that issue. This issue is a really good issue to read. It's a nice introduction to a brand spanking new character in the form of Kazar. And I give X-Men number 10, which came out in the year of... Let's see, where are you? Here we go. Came out in March of 1965. I give this issue a 9 out of 10. It's a great issue. The next issue is the introduction of a character who just recently showed up on the pages of Howard the Duck. The Stranger. Man, you gotta love this cover that Jack, Kirk, Jack the King Kirby drew. This is a gorgeous looking cover. It's just too bad they don't use these type of covers that much. I mean, just the X-Men just wandering through the streets, and then there's the Stranger who just walk out in there. Now, I should also note that before I get started reviewing this issue, this is the last part of the first Brotherhood saga. And, uh, the last time we see some characters for a while. Uh, plus, the last time... Uh, plus, this is the last time the original lineup of the Brotherhood actually existed. The original lineup. Because they kind of go away for a while. I'll explain it at the end of this particular thing. So, this issue opens up with uh, Xavier detecting something while uh, detecting some new presence coming to Earth. So, he thinks it's a mutant. Even though it really isn't. Um, so, they... So Xavier sends out the X-Men to search for him. And the Stranger, this is his first appearance in the comic. He just shows up completely out of nowhere. And he, um... <clears throat> Sorry about that, I need to take care of something. Here we go. Uh, he takes care, he basically rents a room. And he and his, and his uh, landlady says he needs money for his first, first deposit. But he needs an, she needs an advance on the first month's rent. So he just sticks his hand in his coat pocket and hands her a big wad of cash. I mean, that must mean what? Maybe $100 there, maybe? Maybe more? I don't know, but man. She's shocked at this. The fact that... Um, the fact that she hand, he handed her a wad of cash. And then he decides to go... One nearby just walks on air, and he realizes though that's drawing attention and one attention. So he just walks through walls, and he just happens to run into the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants just by coincidence. They just happen to be there in this particular area. I think this is supposed to be New York City. Yes. As for where this takes place, it could be New York City, but. Uh, they never all right say it's New York City, but I think it's New York City. Mm -hmm. So the the X Men are still searching about looking for the stranger, and of course uh, Cyclops runs into a couple office, a couple cops. He says uh, he, they're they're really interested, and in, and in, they try to take up sunglasses. I think it's weird for him to wear sunglasses, so he inadvertently just just goes haywire. They put sunglasses. He destroys a cop's gun. He knocks over a lamp post. He says, his eyes are, his eyes are living in the shadow, whatever he touched, no wonder he wouldn't let, he, he wouldn't remove sunglasses. And the thing cuts through, and then Cyclops gets sunglasses back, definitely. But at least they understood never to remove the sunglasses. Yep. And then they just, uh, go wander about, and Cyclops puts the sunglasses back on, and then, uh, Magneto tries to convince the stranger to join him. And, 
<laughs> of course, Mastermind tries to send what was illusion of that he's underwater. Really, he isn't. And he says that, and he unleashes his power, and then turns Mastermind to stone. Yes, he turns him to stone, and he drops through what seems like three floors. I am not kidding. He drops through three floors, and the angel shows up at this. Uh, it shows up at the well, the headquarter, uh, the the Brotherhood's lair. Has a brief scuffle with them, and. Of course, uh, Iceman shows up and freezes Quicksilver, but uh, um, Cyclops diffuses the situation by having uh, he uh, where he um, stops the fighting and he defrost uh, Quicksilver. And at this point, that that Scarlet Witch Quicksilver quit the Brotherhood, and they do later on come back briefly a little bit later on uh, in the pages of Avengers, but they never. Re but otherwise, though, they officially quit. They're no longer part of the the Brotherhood, and they just leave and. They don't technically return to the book game for some time. But uh, the stranger takes Magneto and Toad. And of course Magneto thinks he's immune. And then he reveals he is not immune to And basically shows up his powers like that. He can go giant size. He says, you're growing larger right before my eyes. You can't be giant man. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. The fact that he thought he was giant man. And so he takes and wraps him in a cocoon. The X-Men, of course, take uh, Mastermind's statue, Mastermind, back to uh, the Xavier Institute. And and he says that um, the only way to reverse it is to have Stranger do it himself. So they go and find Stranger, but the Stranger reveals he's actually just someone from the stars. He's an alien. He reveals he's actually an alien. Now, this is before he starts wearing those odd outfits he start wearing. And here, he's just wearing, like, a suit. So he takes... Toad and and Magneto takes them off planet. Of course, they later return uh, several issues later, and and they think, oh, uh, that's the end of the Brotherhood. But this is the last time the Brotherhood themselves actually appear in the book until much later. I don't, the the Brotherhood themselves don't return to page of the X Men until toward the until until a year before the the book goes to reprints. So it is a while before the Brotherhood shows up again. So they just remove uh, Mastermind, Toad, and Magneto from the Cerebro thing. And of course, uh, the X-Men basically cheering the thing they have to disband. But nope, that there's still more evils to come, which is nice. I like the fact that uh, Stanley wrote in that there's still more battles to come. And they think, um, and Beast, he says, Beast, slow him down. They mustn't see me. My identity must be not made public. That's why people know of his personal behavior. They don't know that he is the leader of the X-Men. Mm -hmm. Or that he's a mutant at this point. That is not revealed to Grant Morrison's run. Mm -hmm. So Beast just distracts them. While the X-Men take Xavier to their X-Chopper. And it flies what goes back to the Xavier Institute. And then all of a sudden, the the Cerebro goes off and says that uh, something big is coming. And who, what that is, I'll reveal in the next episode. This issue... Is really good. Another really good standout issue by Stan Lee and Jack the King Kirby. And uh, excellent artwork. Uh, get a little bit more development with Cerebro. And a, a nice bit of character development. Uh, and and also has a lot, a lot of nice series progression. Uh, excuse me. Really nice, but here's the thing. Mass my this stays stone for very long. By the time Roy Thomas takes out the book, he's already out of stone, anyways. Yeah, the thing doesn't last too long. But suffice this to say, it's still a good issue. Um, so I give X Men number 11 a 9.5 out of 10. Really good issue. A nice introduction to a brand spanking new character who, like Kazar, is not a villain. He's a heroic character. He's a, well, Kazar is a hero, per se. Stranger is more of a neutral character. I wouldn't necessarily call him a villain. He just acts more. He he he's more neutral, in some ways. But still, good issue. And issue eleven concludes the first Brotherhood saga. All right. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode, which will cover another two issues of Uncanny X Men, covering issues twelve and thirteen. Episode number seven. No, episode eight. This episode's episode seven. Yep, episode number seven. Yeah, this is episode number seven. Next episode is episode number eight. But until then, I will 
see you there. Bye.